Carl had said there were no projects with state in the title. Well, there you go. Um, just this one, probably. So that is the, that's the project. Um, we started in March. Could you change that? And that's our aim, to examine the nature and impact of China and India's strategies on the governance of biomedical innovation. So it's really where does the UK sit in the global bioeconomy, the emerging bioeconomy. A lot of this hasn't happened yet, but it's promised to happen. So it's, if you like, a question of future markets and how does the UK fit within the global market, which is changing quite rapidly. We've taken four case studies around regenerative medicine and stratified or personalised medicine. The reason for that are these are two cutting edge or seem to be cutting edge areas of um, health technology development where there will be large markets involved. Um, if you take regenerative medicine, um, the House of Lords, and as a kind of indication of where the UK is on this, the House of Lords produced a report a couple of months ago on the future of regenerative medicine innovation in the UK. And um, if you do a search for China or in India within that report, you will find no mention of it. Um, what it is, is is essentially kind of UK internalist view of where the UK is and which is not taking into account the broader global bioeconomy which this project will be looking at. Yeah. Okay, um, these are the objectives. So what are the primary components and directions of China um, in terms of their innovation strategies? How do these strategies align with or depart from those in the developed economies? Um, to what extent do the national strategies engage with or challenge existing uh, regional and global regimes and modes of innovation governance? So that's the transnational level. And what are the implications of all this for the UK? So what we're trying to do is to look at the position of China and India in terms of, firstly, their recognition that these elements in the future bioeconomy are of considerable significance. And that's reflected in their investment in the area. And secondly, how does that then relate to what the UK is doing about it? Some parts of the UK state are more aware of this issue than others. House of Lords Science Technology Committee, as I've indicated, is not very aware of it. Other parts like BIS, UK, TI, TSB and so on are very aware of it. So the question is how do they then anticipate, if you like, the future development of strategy in India and China and then think about, well, do we compete or do we engage? And if we engage, what, what modes of collaboration might we have with them? And China and India are thinking the same thing. Because they're, they're I, I think, probably more aware uh, because they're trying to access this economy of which we already form part, UK already forms part. What they're thinking of is, well, how do we do it? What alliances do we need? And if we're coming from a relatively weak position, what do we need to do? So the announcement yesterday, for example, by the Chinese Prime Minister, that they're going to sh uh, shift their emphasis in their um, science budget from applied to basic research. So they want to get into innovation. They're making a very large shift of investment into basic research, within which you've got one of our case studies, fortunately, which is, um, which is stem cells. OK. Thank you. Um, this, is, this is the team. Um, what we're doing is we are, where we can, recruiting extra people with a dimension in their research, which we then attach to the project and we collaborate with them. So two people who've decided to join us are Maki Unimura, who's doing a study of Japan and she's looking at, if you like, the China-India thing from Japan's perspective. And Haidan Chen is at Tsinghua University and she is um, doing a case study for us within China of um, personalised medicine. And that, if you like, is an opportunistic um, uh, strategy where we find people who are working in the field and we say, OK, we will attach you to the project. You will get status, ESRC recognition and a profile. And in return, we get the working papers that they produce as a result of the research. And we may fund part of their travel and accommodation as well. So they're kind of expanding the periphery of the project as and when we get the opportunity to do so. Thank you. OK, where are we at the moment? Phase one, that's more or less complete in terms of the establishing the database, which is available to all members of the project. Phase two, we're commencing that. We've done about 30 interviews in the UK and in China and in India. And um, we have um, researchers in India at the moment doing research, doing interviews. Um, the database development and analysis, that's continuing. That's feeding back into the workshops. We've run uh, three workshops uh, so far. Um, one in the UK, 
one in China and one currently, my colleague Alex Faulkner is in India running one jointly with our JNU partners. And these are with scientists and uh, policymakers. Okay. Emerging issues, well, we started off with one analysis, as one does, which is derived from SDS theory, from political science and innovation theory, kind of combination of those uh, perspectives that we've used before. But increasingly, we're looking at the role of the, the global market and how that's impacting. Um, there is a hegemony, a, a kind of accepted orthodox model of biomedical innovation, which the West has propagated and which suits, um, obviously suits our interests, and why wouldn't we? Uh, China and India don't necessarily fit into that because they don't have the same kind of resources, for example, basic science infrastructure. So they have a different approach. Um, there is a coincidence of interest between, if you like, the fact that China and India are coming onto the global scene in terms of working out how they're going to position themselves in this future market, and the fact that Western health consumers are increasingly dis dissatisfied with the very long uh, gestation of innovation in biomedicine. It takes uh, 10 to 15 years to produce new health technologies, generally speaking. Um, if China and India offer this earlier um, than the West does, then health consumers are increasingly choosing to go there and uh, purchase healthcare, um, which is on the margins, if you like, of acceptability in the West, um, in clinics in China and India. So that, that market is, a, is propelling innovation in a way which is unprecedented so far as the West is concerned. We want to look at that in terms of uh, governance. It shifts the emphasis in governance away from the supply side, which is what are the suppliers, which is science, medicine, industry, do about regulating themselves, and puts it onto the demand side, which is consumers making choices um, in a global market, what kinds of information do they need. And that demand side emphasis is more or less completely um, absent from the current discussion, and that's what we're bringing to the workshops. Thank you.